Now that we have our lines all set up, I'd like to put labels for every city on the far right hand side up here, just in the margin up here. The way to think of this, the same way that we thought about drawing our lines, the question is how many of these labels do we want? If we wanted to label every single one of these data points, then we would have 72. If we wanted to just put a label up at the top, uh, perhaps saying, here's the title of our chart, then we would just have one. In this case, though, we want six. We want one for every single one of these cities. So we could manually add each and every one of these, doing svg.append, 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 and then manually position them on the right there. But that's a terrible way to do it. We want to do it the fancy way. So what we are going to do is, because we want to add six different labels here, we need to say, do we have any variable that has six elements in it? Do we have a list that is six elements long? We say, oh, we have nested. Because we said, hey, take our 72 different data points here and then put them in groups. You don't have to think any further than that, right? Just think for now. I want to put six labels on the page. So I'm going to say, hey, SVG, um, find all the text elements, or we could say all of the city label elements. It's going to end up being the same either way. Attach nested to it. And for every one of those groups, I want you to add a text element. Don't think any further than that. We're going to save, we're going to refresh, and we're going to confirm that inside of this SVG, there are now six text elements. So the first game to play when doing anything like this in D3 is just make sure you have a variable that has the right number of elements in it. And if you do, just bind that data, throw those things on the page, and just approach it one by one. So now that we have six elements on the page, there are a few different things we can set. We can set the text, uh, we can set the X, and we can set the Y. So in complicated situations, we are not necessarily sure what's going on. I find it sometimes helps to just put in placeholder values. We can save and refresh and we'll see that we have six different labels smashed on top of each other in the top left-hand corner. So the reason why you do this one at a time is because then it allows you to change these pieces one at a time because we know this works, and now we can just say, okay, what do we wanna do? First thing, well, shift that over to the right, then change the labels, then move them down. And as you do them step by step, instead of all at once, it gives you a way to debug much more easily and kind of reverse changes to get back to a place where things were working. So first off, let's take this text and shove it all the way to the right. So that is going to be X. And if you want to push it from here, which is zero, all the way to the right hand side of the graph, we are just going to use width. So anytime you want to push something to the far right hand side, you're able to just use that variable width. And there you go. Uh, one question might be, wouldn't this push it all the way off the edge of this graphic because it is the full width of the graphic? Just remember that width, according to the margin convention, is not the full size of your SVG. The width variable is just the area that you draw your chart in. So not your axes, none of that, just where you're drawing the chart. So if I say x equals zero, it's gonna be right here. And if I say x equals width, it's gonna be all the way over here. Same way that this is zero up here, and this is height right here. This is not height, this is not zero. This is not zero, this is not zero. It's just the bounds of where the graphic is drawn. Okay, so we have added city label, uh, we call it text. Now, we could say ATTR class city label if you we were responsible. Do the same thing for a temp path up here. 
Um, if we were responsible, we would do that, but honestly, it doesn't matter right now, um, but it will. So I guess it's, it's good hygiene to do this. Okay, so next up, uh, we need to change these labels to not say here is some text. We need it to say the actual name of the city. So we bound nested to this. So you might have an idea about what is available to us, but let's just say, okay, right now, when we say here is some text, every single one of them has here is some text. Because we want to change it on a per element basis, we are going to change to a function D because every single one of these text elements gets a different inner text than we are gonna say function D. Now, what is D? The, you might think you can do something like D.city because that's the name of that column. If you do D.city though, <clears throat> save it, refresh, doesn't work, nothing is there, it all disappears. Um, no. We get undefined, 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 undefined. Now, why is that? Well, let's just look at D instead. If we look at D, we see that D is not just one of our data points. It's not one of these rows. Because we said data nested on both of these, this is how we end up with six different labels because it is a group. It is a group of all of these together. It is a group of all of these together. It is a group of all of these together. So when you do data dot, or when you do dot data nested, you end up with a D that has a key and it has values. So every single time you do dot data nested, inside of your function D, you're either going to be using your D dot key or your D dot values. So last time we used d.values, in this case, what we want is just for text, we just want the name of the city. So the name of the city is d.key. <clears throat> so if we turn d.key, wonderfully enough, there we go. They're all mashed on top of each other, but so it goes. Now all we need to do we think is move them down to be in line with these dots here. So in order to do that, each one of these is going to have a different Y position, a different distance from the top. So let's just function D. Uh, sometimes I also will do like a return zero here just so I can refresh and make sure everything's still in the right place and there are not any other errors. So what we need to do now is we need to somehow figure out where this data point is. Now, I talked a lot more about this in class. Um, there is actually a file that you have inside of here called notes transformations.html. Uh, you can read this for a little bit more detail uh, about what we're about to do. But the idea is I want to find this data point here. I have access to all the data in this group by doing console.log D, I refresh, and I see, okay, I have a key, I have values. I'm interested in finding that very last data point. So I'll look at d.values, refresh. And so what I wanna do here is somehow find the data point for December, because that will allow me to move down to the correct Y height. So if I look at all my data points, I say, oh, I am looking for the data point where the month is 12. So in order to say, okay, I have this list, find me the one where the month is 12. In JavaScript, I'm gonna say uh, December, December data, is d.values.find, and I want to find the one where the month is 12. Now, if we look here, we see that this has quotation marks around it, so it is a string, um, but here I want to convert it to a number so I can compare it with a number, just in case I went back and then somehow I converted all of these to numbers instead of strings, 
This just makes me say, okay, always make sure it's a number, and I'm gonna make sure it's a number. And as a result, it goes through every single one of the values, and then it finds me the one where the month is 12. Save, refresh, and there we go. So it has the city, the month, the high, and the low. Based on the high temperature, well, let's scroll down in the circle. The circle is positioned by looking at the high temperature and then using that with the Y position scale. So we're gonna do the exact same thing in order to move this data point to be right next to that. So I'm gonna say, hey, um, return Y position scale, December data dot high. And there we go, it ends up moving down. Um, there are a few other things I need to change about this. I need to vertically align it with the dot. So I will do that with ATTR alignment baseline middle. And now it's in the middle. I need to push it a little bit to the right. So when you have a text element, it has an X and a Y, which is the X and Y position but it also has a dx and a dy. And so dx and dy are offsets. I'm gonna use dx to push it over to the right a little bit. Great, I'm gonna make the font size a little bit smaller. So I'll do font size 12, make it nice and small. Um, now we're left with the problem of Lima and Melbourne are overlapping a little bit. Stockholm could get a little more space from Beijing. So I'm going to also add a little bit of an offset on dy to push these down. Uh, I'm going to do it in kind of a hacky way, though. I'm going to say, OK, I want to give every single one of these text elements a different text offset on the y-axis. And if you are Melbourne or if this group is Stockholm, I want you to move a little bit down. Otherwise, I don't want you to move down at all. So because we used data.nested, we have values, we have key. Uh, so I'm gonna be saying, hey, is this Melbourne, is this Stockholm? And that will then push them down a little bit. Um, there is one other way that I could have done all of this here. Um, I could have said, instead of binding nested to it, I could have made a new variable that was only different data points that represented December. And then I could have done a select all data, enter append. Uh, so that would have also, if I had said, hey, just give me ones, just give me data points that are based on December. Uh, this code would end up being decently different. So I'm not gonna do that in this video, uh, but if that makes sense to you more, uh, or if it makes sense to you all, it's another way that you could do this. Because all you're looking to do is somehow end up with six data points, whether you put them into groups, uh, or whether you're saying just give me uh, some filtered selection of these data points. All right, so that looks pretty good to me.